Hello, this tutorial will walk you through a practice final designed for the CCNA 1. I created this packet tracer activity to help walk you through and give you some practice with some of the skills that you're going to need to do well on the hands-on portion of the Cisco CCNA 1 final. You can download this packet tracer activity that I created from my website at danscourses.com. Just go to CCNA 1 and scroll down until you see CCNA 1 Practice Final Packet Tracer 6. So this activity was designed around Packet Tracer 6 and so you'll need to have Packet Tracer 6 installed for you to open it up. If you scroll down you can see the download link here. So you can download it here. I've also posted some answers to the network device configurations, the type of commands you'll need to solve the packet tracer if you need help. Okay, so I've downloaded this CCNA1 practice final right here. You can see it highlighted here. And I've unzipped it and I have it open on my desktop. Let's start going about filling in the answers and see if we can complete the activity. Let's take a look at the instructions. Right here on the interface where you can see the topology of all the devices, you can see that I've put instructions on how to go about solving this packet tracer activity. I'll also point out that right here it says you will need to configure the router and both switches using the console connection and the desktop terminal program. So when it comes time to configuring the router and the two switches, as you can see if I click on the router, I don't have access to the command line interface tab. So I'm not going to be able just to click on the device and start configuring. What I'll need to do is console in using this console connection. You can see the baby blue curved blue line here going to the router. This is my console cable and it's going from the serial port on this PC to the console port on the router. So if I want to configure the router I need to do that and then terminal in. I'll open up the PC, go to desktop, click terminal and then I'll accept these default settings, click OK, and you can see that I have a console connection to the router right here. So this is similar to the way you would really configure a router for the first time in the real world. You would typically use a cr uh, console cable, a rollover cable, and go from a serial port on a PC or laptop into the console port on the router. Now if I want to change the console connection to the either switch, all I need to do is click here on this little black link. I can drag the console cable over here to the switch and then switch over to the console port on the switch. Okay, so I'll put that back for now. If we continue to look at the instructions, you'll see that the main configuration tasks are listed right here from numbers 1 to 19. And we'll need to go through these. But also you'll see that we have the IPv4 addressing requirements and the IPv6 addressing requirements that we're going to need to figure out in order to give IPv4 and IPv6 addresses to all of the hosts in the network, including the router and the two switches. Also, when you open up this activity, you'll see that there is a activity instructions window that has the same information that you'll see on the main window as well the IPv4 addressing, the IPv6 addressing, the configuration tasks, etc. So I think the best way to start this um, activity is to figure out your subnetting or your IPv4 addressing. And so that's what we should start with first. On number one up here it says divide the 192.168.4.0 slash 24 network into four equal sized subnets. And then on number two it says use the second subnet for the green network. So we're going to need to find that subnet and use it for this network over here. Alright, let's do that right now. So I've got Notepad open and you can see I've written out 192.168.4.0 slash 24. So we're going to need to subnet this network into four equal size subnets. Let's write out the slash 24 subnet mask in binary. Okay, that's 8, 16, 24 ones, dot 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 8, 0. So there's slash 24. So if we borrow two bits from these zeros and turn those to ones, 
then we now have subnet bits in the 128th place and the 64's place and so this last number one is what I like to call the magic number we have a one in the 64's place and what that means is I'll just put that here magic number equals 64 it means the networks will go up by 64 so I'll just copy that so if we have a slash 26 subnet mask meaning 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 16, 24, 25, 26 ones, then the first network will be 4.0. I'll just copy that. And the second subnet will be 64. And the third subnet will be 128. And then the last subnet will be 192. So you can see here now the subnets go up by 64. Starting at 0 is our first subnet, then the 64, then the 128, and then the 192. And if you add 64 to that, you get 256. So this is our last subnet. So now we've divided this 192.168.4.0 slash 24 address space into four networks, the 0, the 64, the 128, and the 192. So the network that we're going to be using for the green network will go from 64 all the way up to 127, 127 being the broadcast address and 64 being the network address. And that will be what we'll use for the green network. Now, if we look here, it says use the fourth subnet to create four smaller subnets for 14 hosts each. Use the first of the smaller subnets for the yellow network. So for the yellow network, we're going to use the fourth subnet, meaning this subnet right here. But we're going to need to turn this into basically smaller subnets. So in other words, instead of doing a slash 26 subnet mask, what if we did instead, we'll just write this out again. Instead of doing a slash 26, if we want a subnet for 14 hosts, what we want to do is borrow two more ones in the subnet mask. So now we have a 25, 26, 27, slash 28 subnet mask. And now the magic number or the last one, the last borrowed bit is in the 16's place. So now the magic number equals 16. And so the networks will go up by 16. So the first subnet will be 192, which was the last subnet that we had created. And then all we have to do now, we'll copy that. And we'll hit return, paste it. And 192 plus 16 will be 208. And that'll be the second subnet. And then from 208, if we add 16 again, we get 224, we'll copy that, and then 240. So now what we've done is we've created from the last subnet, slash 26, we created four smaller subnets of slash 28. And this whole process of what we've done is called VLSM, or variable length subnet masks. We created three slash 26 networks and four slash 28 networks. But this works because none of the address spaces impinge on one another. In other words, that each of the address spaces do not cross over. So now that we've taken this and we've divided this last subnet into four smaller subnets, we look at the activity and it says, use the first of the smaller subnets for the yellow network. So that would be this one right here. So it'll go from 192 all the way up to 207. And so that will be the subnet that we use for the yellow network. So we'll get rid of the rest here just so we can see clearly what we're using. Here are our two subnets, 192.168.4.64, 
all the way up to dot 127 slash 26 for the green network. And for the yellow network, you can see that we're going to use 192.168.4.192, which will go all the way up to dot 207 with a slash 28 subnet mask. And so now we know our two subnets are addressing for our two IPv4 subnets for the green and yellow networks.